Hi, Cindy. Thank you for joining us for Primary Sources, and let's dive right in. What is cross-stitching? Cross-stitch is a, an ancient embroidery art that is literally X's. You stitch one direction, and then you go back the other direction, and you cross your stitch. So you end up literally with just an X. Okay. So there are other stitches that can be used on cross stitch pieces and there almost always is back stitching, which is just another embroidery stitch. Sometimes they're specialty stitches, but mostly you're gonna get just the X's. And embroidery's been around for thousands of years. Cross stitch, not quite so much came into vogue around 1,000 to 1,500, <laughs> so right long around time. there. It's said that, um, I have no idea if this is actually true, but that Catherine of Aragon brought some of her cross-stitch black work with her from Spain to England, and so that might have helped spread, spread the gift of this particular style. Um, ladies in the 17th and 18th century would create samplers of their needlework. You didn't have printed patterns to look at and so to remember what the stitch was they would have a piece of fabric that would literally have a sample of the embroidery. Well that okay. spread to using cross stitch more in something called a sampler which young ladies would create that showed um, how they how well they did their needlework. It would almost <laughs> always include an alphabet and some primitive designs, houses, leaves, vines, this kind of thing. Uh -huh. So cross stitch has been around for a long time. It kind of went out of vogue a little bit and the last 40 to 50 years it has enjoyed a resurgence. And now it's big business. And some of that is due to computers and the internet. Mm. But there is so much more available. The variety that you can get is just stunning. What do you so, think uh, accounts for the uh, increase in interest over the past few I, years? I think some of it is people were looking for other, other outlets. And with computers, it just allowed people to be much more creative with patterns. I mean, to create your own cross stitch pattern on your own is pretty laborious. Mm. Computers allowed you to take an entire picture and basically pixelate it into oh. various stitches. I see. And so that just has exploded the, the companies that are doing that. So, so uh, you mentioned it just primarily being centered around X's. Mm -hmm. So can you give us a brief demonstration and show sure. us how that plays out? Um, I prefer to do my work on a hoop. Not everybody does that. Depending on the fabric that you're using, sometimes you can just hold it in your hands. This mm -hmm. fabric is called Ada, and it's made by a German company called Weigart and it was created in the 1890s specifically for cross-stitch. It's an inc incredibly even weave, and so the holes are very distinct, and it gives you very even work. So it was actually created for this embroidery technique. I prefer to use on a hoop because it keeps my work very straight and taut so that I make sure my stitches are on. This pattern is part of the design that I put in my display. And so I start my patterns in the middle. Sometimes people start from the top or the yeah. bottom. I start in the middle to be sure that I've got everything correct. And I'm starting on one side. Now I'm um, a little bit weird because I am right-handed, but I do the left-handed directional. That just works better for me, but generally people will go from the bottom left to the top right. Okay. I do just the opposite. <laughs> of course, I'm, I'm a little bit different. <laughs> so you go come up, 
go down in the next hole across and you continue to make a row across. Of course, depending on your pattern, how many stitches you can take across. So it just continues to make single stitches oh, this direction. Oh, I see. And I'll stop it, I'll just stop it in the middle. Hmm. So when I'm ready to go the other direction, then I go to the opposite corner and I cross it. So now it's created. Oh, I see. Now it's created the X. Oh. It's very important when you're doing cross stitch to make sure that you're going the same direction with everything. I've seen monstrous cross stitch where <laughs> People went this way, and then they decided to take it the other direction, so their their X's are not crossed in the same place. Sometimes they'll go back this way, and then cross it the other direction, but that's flipping. Does it give it a more chaotic look it or does. unorganized? Or? It does, and it will put ridges, mm. actually, in your, in your work. So you want everything to lay super flat, and you want every direction every stitch to be the same direction. I see. So, so that's just an example of how you would start this beautiful pattern. Mm, I love books. <laughs> <laughs> so um, when did you become interested in cross stitching and what spurred your interest? When I was six or seven, um, we were living in the border town of Del Rio, Texas. We had a lady who came to our house and helped my mom. And so Dahlia would bring her stitching with her. And she noticed that I was interested in it. So she brought me a piece of cross stitch. And so in that time, and you can still find these, but the X's were already printed on the fabric. And so you just followed the little blue lines to make your it took the, fat, the thread over the little X's that were already there. Well, in my teens and 20s, I quickly learned you don't have to have the X's already there, and I much preferred working on blank fabric, and that's everything that you'll see here today is done on a blank canvas with a printed pattern, and you have to count Okay. which appeals to my sense of order, that <laughs> you've got to count it all. Um, I credit my mom really for giving me a love of handmade things. She was a self-taught sewer and quilter. She taught me to crochet and to knit. And it's just none of those things really just caught on greatly with me. Um, I actually have a deep-seated fear of sewing machines, even though I use one. I don't really like it. And the quilting, you just really have to be able to sew well. Mm -hmm. And so even though mom's quilting bug didn't catch on with me, um, I already liked cross stitch, and so I just started doing more of that. But the love of being able to use your hands to create something beautiful. I got that from mom. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm very, this is a very hands-on, it's very detailed, and when I sit and do it, it is peaceful, it is calming, and kind of like not having a book ready to read, I get a little cranky if I don't have something to read. I get a little cranky when I don't get to stitch. So my stitch time is a little limited, so I'm real protective of that time, and I, it, it just fills me with a sense of accomplishment mm. to watch something come to life. And I think mom had that same feeling. When you finally get something finished, and you finished it beautifully, mm. and it turns out well, it's very satisfying. 
where do you like to cross stitch? Do you have any particular spot in the house or any? It ha I have a setup in my den and that's the only place that I do it because I've got mom's old quilt light because I'm so old now I can't do it without the magnifying light. I used to carry it around in the car even <laughs> of all places. I can't do any of that anymore. And it allows me to, to leave my setup that has a, a rack for my pattern. Mm -hmm. So there's a light, the pattern, I've got the quilt light pulled around and so it's the same chair all, all the time. I'm kind of stuck right there. But that, that probably helps the process. Everything's in order and in its place. You just sit down, you're ready to go. It is. It is. Um, when I had, when my daughter was younger, I always wanted to try to leave it out, which you can't do with little children. Mm -hmm. And now I have some cats, which makes it even worse to live, leave thread and things out. Oh, boy. So uh, we're down to the last kitty. So maybe at some point I'll be able to just leave my stitching out and not have to put it all away because now I have to pack it all up. So, so what type of material do you prefer for the fabric? Fabric and thread are sometimes determined by the pattern that you get. Thread is a little less flexible because somebody has created this particular pattern using a certain thread. Fabric is a little more up in, up in the air. Um, most of my creations are done with this particular thread, which is a cotton six-ply called DMC. Okay. DMC is the gold standard of just cotton embroidery thread. It's been made in the same area of Alsace region in France for a hundred years. And DMC is, you can find this at any craft store, but it's still a very beautiful thread. This is my packaging that I've just, you can get these things at Hobby Lobby and Joann's and stuff. Mm. Um, and I just have sorted them by color. This is one of four packs <laughs> because there are over, I don't know, 400 colors now, I think, or something with that. I don't, I don't know exactly know how many, but it's a lot. And so when you do as much stitching as I do, you want to keep up with your threads so that you can continue to use what you have left. Um, be, and su being super organized, this appeals to me. <laughs> the fabric is more up in the air. Um, as I said, I don't really use Ada because it's a little stiff mm -hmm. for me. And, and I want something that feels really good in my hands. So I prefer to work on hand dyed linen and that's what these are. This is a piece of Ada that came with a, another kit. Everything else is beautiful hand dyed oh, linen. Wow. And these can become just out of this world gorgeous. I'm a little bit better at picking the fabric than changing threads mm -hmm. and so I'm pretty picky about what what I use because I want a high quality linen and linen will take the dye colors a lot deeper so if you have other fabrics that Ada will sometimes do it but linen you will get these gorgeous variations um, this is something that I'm working on that again has it just the variations in the fabric this is all hand dyed and I make sure that the that the fabrics that I choose are also a Zweigert base which is that same German company they make the linen and it's very high quality so linen which comes in various counts per inch and I'll talk about that more in just a moment. Or this is another type of fabric that's similar to linen, but doesn't take the colors quite as deep. And this is called Lugana, which just feels like butter in your hands. Um, it has a very soft 
feel. It also has almost a little shimmer to it. And so I, I really enjoy it. It's a little limper, doesn't have quite as much body, but I love working on Lugana as well. And just for the uh, uh, potential hobbyist getting into this, about how much on average is like a, a, a package of like that thread, like the the, yes. uh, the orange reddish one, yeah. These are about 50, 50 cents oh, that's it. or so. Okay. Um, it's recently kind of gone up because it's getting tough to get some supplies. Um, DMC is fairly inexpensive. If you choose to do something with specialty threads, which there are so many of them, Karen Wallet Water Lilies, Weeks Dye Works, Classic Color Works, Gentle Arts, Dinky Dyes. These are a little bit more in the 250 to 3 range, depending on what you're getting. Or you can do silk threads. Ooh. This is Soie d'Agerre, and these are about $5 a piece. It's mm. pricey. So I don't use this quite as much. I do have a couple of projects that use silk threads, but it, it gets pricey. Some of the patterns that I do also include things like chronic. This is a metallic thread. It comes in various sizes and braids. Sometimes it's just a blending filament so that you can just add a little bit of sheen to what you are doing. Mm. These are, I don't know, two fifty, three dollars okay. but some, I, I, the, some of my big pieces use a lot of chronic and it's really like sewing with fishing line <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> you can't control it very well. And some of my bigger pieces also have beading on them. Not the most enjoyable part of it. I really like to just stitch, mm -hmm. but some of the bigger pieces, they're gonna, you're going to have to use beading needles, and it's more like doing a craft thing mm. at that point. So um, how long can you cross-stitch before taking a break? What, what's the endurance factor in this, um, this craft? I used to be able to sit for hours and do it non-stop. Now I'll sit for about 30 minutes and then just give my hands and body a little bit of a break. And uh, how focused do you have to be to cross stitch? Can you have the TV on and people chatting or do you have to have it quiet and People like can in? be around, people can be chatting, the TV can be yelling, but if I'm wanting to follow a particular series or a mystery story or something, I can't be stitching and doing that at the same time. Uh, pat sometimes patterns are very, very easy to follow. This is a particular one that's actually on finished on that table, which is color-coded, which is super easy to follow. And then there's this stuff. This is a company called Marabellia. And so the patterns are this. Ooh. You better be paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> because you're not you're not going to know where you are if your attention is constantly if the in-laws are yapping at you while you're <laughs> Yeah. See, I mean this is this is crazy stuff. Oh, and this detail. isn't even one of the more complicated ones. Sometimes they're, they're, they fold out to double-sided huge. I mean, it's very, it's very, very detailed. So you, you better be paying attention. Uh, in the summertime, I'll actually put in a, a TV series that I particularly like, and I'll, I'll listen because I already know it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so I'll just watch seasons, whole year-long seasons of a particular 
thing. I think I've gone through Little House on the Prairie and <laughs> Dr. Quinn and Alias and Justified <laughs> because I have all I have all of them. And so I'll just put them in and run the whole series all summer long because I can just listen <laughs> to something that I like, but I don't have necessarily have to pay attention. Hmm. So what themes and or subjects do you like to cross-stitch? What, what calls to you? Well, with all my display in the lobby, obviously I um, love Halloween. <laughs> um, not that I'm just in love with that holiday, but I like the patterns, I like the festiveness of them, little ghosts and witches, and I used to have a black cat for 17 years, oh. and so there were a lot of black cat stitching. Do you like the, the, the colors, the oranges, and I the jack-o'-lanterns, and the... I do. Mm. Pump, I love pumpkin. In fact, I just ordered another another pattern that is pumpkin pie related, and you roll it onto a, a rolling pin. You put the stitching around a rolling pin. That's just so cool. <laughs> but I love pumpkins and orange, purple, mm. lime greens. And then my other loves are the gorgeous blues and greens. And just really beautiful, basic um, neutrals mm -hmm. that are beautiful like this. Man, I mean, this mm. is just gorgeous. This is just gorgeous stuff. Just so beautiful. Um, I, I enjoy doing Christmas designs. I like doing things with animals. I have several different things that are that are long-term projects. One is snow leopards. Ooh. It's going to take me a really long time because it's corner to corner, which means the entire piece will be stitched. So... So on average, how long does a smaller piece take? Um, if I'm real dedicated to it, it could just take a, a month or two. It just depends on how complicated. The things like this stuff, this is years for me to mm. be able to finish. I have one that this is a company called Mirabilia, and those are long-term projects. I have one that's, this is year number five. I just got a little annoyed with it, and so I set it aside. And it, you'll, you'll have that. You, they're called whips. It's works in progress. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you just, you just don't feel like working on it, and so you pick up something else. Mm -hmm. And I try to keep the whips at about 10, mm -hmm. get, have enough discipline to finish something before I start something else so I'm not a serial starter. <laughs> <laughs> people who have 40 and 50 things going on, that's crazy. I would never have finished it. That would be me. <laughs> and I, there's, there's good satisfaction in being able to finish something smaller. Because mm. if I waited to do those bigger pieces, I mean, it would just be years before I ever saw any completion. Mm. So. And how does using more colors make it more challenging? Uh, for thread, when you're using all the multicolored threads. The more threads you have, the more complicated your your piece is going to be. This is like this is a very simple one from just from the internet. You can, <laughs> you can do you can do freebie patterns like this, mm -hmm. and this is not very many threads at all. Mm -hmm. So this is easy to, to sort, keep up, keep up with, and you can see that there's distinct sections that you do. If you have a hundred different skeins of thread, then you're going to get a lot of what's called confetti. <laughs> and confetti will drive you bananas because <laughs> you're doing... One, one X here and one here in this color. And then you have to switch to this color. And then something else. And literally what that, I mean, confetti is a great word for mm. that. Because that's what it <laughs> is. But then when you back up from the piece, mm. you see that, oh, okay, so this is all coming together. But when you've got it right there in front of you and you have all those different colors, it is, it can be maddening. And it's time consuming. Mm -hmm. I am not one of these one of these stitchers that has multiple needles going at the same time where where they will just run their threads 
back and forth across the back of the fabric, my mother would turn over in her grave if I <laughs> did that because the back of my pieces look really nice and they'll look as good as the front and that comes from um, a mother who was a great sewer. Mm -hmm. um, so it takes a long time to stop and start with, with ending, a, ending a piece of thread and then sewing, going on to something else. So, wow. yes, it gets much more complicated having 12 colors versus 50 or 60 or the piece with the hundred birds, which it's a hundred. It's a hundred. Well, the, I think that one's 50. The one that's the iris that I'm working on, it, it's a hundred scale. It's insanity. I, I, I lost my mind when I decided to do it. Honestly. You had a dark night of the soul, <laughs> so to speak. Yes. But I imagine once you finish something that complex and beautiful, it's just an awe-inspiring feeling. Yeah. To... Wow, I actually did this. <laughs> so have you developed any skills in your cross-stitch pursuit that you use in other hobbies? Well, I have pretty nimble fingers being a piano player. Mm. Um, already so I think that's they kind of complement each other Ooh. a little bit with that I just have to be able to use my hands in a very detailed way and I think probably those and just my organization skills mm. you you have to be on your game to be following patterns that are that complicated and under, know what you're doing <laughs> So. It sounds to me as if, if, if you've had a lot of practice in cross-stitch, you could be like a scheduler for a major corporation or a project <laughs> manager It's all of these details. And... It is pretty detailed. <laughs> you can bet the, the cool thing about cross-stitch is that you can make it as simple or as complex as you want. Mm. That is one of the joys of this activity is that the easiest stuff can be done by a child mm. or if you want to get super complicated then you can take it to a, another level it it allows you to be so creative in your designs and it also allows me to choose a variety of things I don't want to be pigeonholed into I'm always going to do mirabilia patterns, or I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I know there are some stitchers, I'm only interested in primitive stuff, and that's their prerogative. Me, I'm all over the place. <laughs> I like fairies and mermaids. Mm -hmm. I like things that have quirky little sayings. I, I like some of the several patterns over there are French patterns which was just a nightmare to translate <laughs> the pattern because it wasn't anywhere in English. Um, and so I just, it allows me to do a variety of things. And I put this over here, because this is Emma Cogden. I love this saying, I want to be a flamingo, not the pigeon. <laughs> be a flamingo, a flock of pigeons. And, and that's what cross-stitch allows me to just do so many different things and at, for many different levels for people. And so it's something that can be taught to a child. It's something that you can take it as complicated as you want. Wow. So any advice for someone who's just getting started with cross-stitching? Where, where, what are some good resources for them? You can find good basic instructions on great YouTube videos and various websites that will show you how to start your cross-stitch. Good basic supplies are available at Hobby Lobby, at Joann's, at really kind of those places. If you want to take it a little further, then you look for an LNS, which is your local needlework store. Mm -hmm. Those are disappearing very quickly, and it's not just the pandemic. They've been closing for decades. It's very expensive to keep a brick-and-mortar needlework store 
open because the profit margins are so small. The internet has helped, but every cross-stitch store in my area has closed. Mm -hmm. And so my local needlework store is 50 miles away in Cyprus, oh. in Spring Cyprus. Um, I, I go to a shop called Three Stitches, and heaven forbid that Miss Pam ever decides to retire. I'm not sure what all of us old cross <laughs> are going to do if Pam ever closes that shop. Um, but if you want to look at more variety, things like this, which is hand-dyed linen specialty threads, and not just use something like DMC, which is available at almost any craft store, mm -hmm. then you visit a local needlework shop. Um, on the internet, there are tons of places that you can order from. I only have a few because, I'm, again, I'm kind of picky and I want great service and I want, I want to know what I'm getting from them. So one, two, three stitch is a great source and they have all of the supplies and they have a variety of patterns that you can look at. For fabric, there are a number of hand-dyed linen manufacturers. Uh, Picture This Plus is based out of Kansas. Fabrics by Stephanie in Minnesota. Um, Under the Sea, which is who made this gorgeous fabric that I've got for a, for a mermaid pattern coming up, which is, Ooh. which is this. It's just down the road in San Antonio. Um, Fiberlicious is in Pennsylvania. And then there are even international companies that you can get stuff from. Crafty Kitten is in England, um, Mystic Lens in Australia. So this is an international activity. So you can take it as as complicated as you want or you can just get started with simple things that you can find at a local craft store hmm. with instructions from a YouTube video. And do you have any uh, places to meet other cross stitch folks and talk shop or is it a more personal thing for you? Or? It for me it's it's just personal because like the meet, they do have meetings at three stitches, but I would spend so much time trying to get up there yeah. and back because it's so far away. They do have stitching nights and and stuff. I've just never been able to participate in those because I literally just can't get to them. Mm. So, unfortunately, and I, I'm sure that there are embroidery guilds and there and there are guilds where you can meet with stitchers and I would love to do that. It's just a question of finding them sure. here in this area. And we're so sprawled out, like you're saying, 50 plus miles to get to your right. local needlework shop. Yes. And there are, there are many more guilds in the Midwest and on the East Coast, honestly, mm. than down in this area. There are guilds in Texas, but again, it's something that I just do on my own right now. Awesome. Well, thanks for giving us the rundown on cross-stitching. Now we're ready to look at your work. Oh, awesome. These are some of my finished pieces, and I'm very proud to be a needle worker. I, I loved this piece, which is Blackbird Designs. This is Barbara and Cheryl, one of a, a piece that I did about 12 years ago. And it is one of those that's corner to corner. Mm. So that means the entire work is covered in stitches. This took me about four years to complete. I'm a very slow stitcher. I'm not one of these real fast ladies. But I, I thought the effect was really yeah. stunning. Um, their pattern, it, I really credit that because it looks like a photograph. It it when does. You, <laughs> when you That's get it gorgeous. finished, I this is one of my favorite pieces. How many how many uh, colored threads do you think you used on that? Um, I think this one was in the fifty 
fit it in. It's very intricate. It's yeah. beautiful. This is one of my favorite pieces that hangs in my den. This is a, a designer named Barbara Anna, and there are several of her pieces in the outside case <laughs> that are displayed. She's just fun and hilarious, and she has, she's the one that has the don't bug me, I'm stitching. <laughs> <laughs> just, just really, really cute things. This is a company called Shepherd's Bush, and they do a lot of primitive things, but the framing is also important because this is Jill Rensel Studio. The Rensel Studio actually does the framing for the pieces for Shepherd's Bush. They are both in Ogden, Utah, and Shepherd's Bush creates the patterns and then they will send them to Jill to finish. So I sent this piece to her and she finished it for me and this is just stuff that's cut out <laughs> and just it's very simple but Jill does an incredible job and you'll see some of her other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, Again, just variety. These are more modern pieces. Satsuma Street and the Alpine. I'd, when I started doing this one, my daughter said, Mom, this is so modern. Why are you doing this? She <laughs> said, and she fell in love with this one since she's worked in Colorado. And I said, okay, baby, this is yours. Aww. So um, it's not even finished yet. It's just the stitching is finished, but I haven't. It, it's supposed to be in that. Ooh. design. I just haven't gotten around and I'm not, again, I'm not very good at that kind of stuff. I try to send my stuff to somebody else to do because I just don't like that end of it. But there are other people who are better at that than I am. Oh, so looks lovely. This is a pattern company called Lizzie Kate as are these. Lizzie Kate is no longer in business, but you can still get the patterns. Alan and Linda decided to finally retire. This is some of the first stuff when I really started picking up cross stitch again and doing it heavy duty a lot. I picked a lot of Lizzie Kate. The finishing is from a tutorial by Vanna Pfeiffer, who is called the Twisted Stitcher, <laughs> and I used her her finishing technique to to do this. And this hilarious bell pull, which turns out to kind of mimic the tombstones, <laughs> is, oh. is just hilarious. <laughs> I I think it, again, it's just just a super fun and <laughs> festive piece. The dog lessons, cat lessons are very old Lizzie Kate patterns that I have enjoyed since I have animals. And I don't do too many things with words. I mean, there's a little bit here, mm -hmm. but I don't do too, too much of that. But these I fell in love with. Mm -hmm. These are my French patterns by a company called Tornacotton. This is Joya Noel, and that is too, but they're just different. Funny little snowman guy, <laughs> reindeer going around, and yes, these patterns were in French, and it was a pain <laughs> to translate. <laughs> um, this is Snow Fence, just a fun little piece. And the pattern, you, you had, this is something extra, little things that you can buy that are made by Just a Button Company. Just really cute little things. This is a Mary Inglebright pattern that I fell in love with, just the believe. When my daughter arrived, I realized, wow, I need a stocking for her. And this isn't Molly's stockings, but this one's mine, and this is the one that I made for my mom, who was Aww. the sewer. And I'm the musician, and we had this piano, like <laughs> literally a Story and Clark that looked like that. So all of my family members, my, 
myself, my husband, my daughter, and mom and dad all have one of these Aww. stitched stockings, which took oh, a long <laughs> time. Um, I, again, a crazy moment when I decided to do those. <laughs> this is another shepherd's bush, but I had it finished by someone else um, at Blue Ribbon Designs, Belinda Carls Nace. I sent her my stitching, and this is her specialty that she attaches this like in this beautiful format. It's just a different way to finish it. Another one of hers is in the case in the display, okay. and she is very, very talented. This is another shepherd's bush that is framed by Jill Rensel. Mm. And this is the form, this is literally the exact frame that they showed on the picture of the cross stitch pattern. And so she framed it just exactly that way. This is Amber Hansen's hand, hand painting. Mm -hmm. Just enhances it. I, I really believe that the finishing is part of the design. And when it's done really well, like those, mm -hmm. it, it just brings the whole piece to life. I have about six or seven Mirabilia patterns that are framed like this at my house. I just only brought two. This is January Garnet Fairy. And this one is Bluebeard's Princess Mirabella. Ooh. And that piece, I think, is my favorite piece I've ever stitched. Um, thank goodness I did it now because I'd never be able to see this dark fabric anymore. Um, this is called Mystic by Picture This Plus, and it just turned out that the the dye is coming down like a <laughs> like I, a beam of light. I mean, it was like it was meant to be on, mm. on that. That is not. I almost never choose the original fabric that they suggest, um, and I of course I changed this one and. It, it is just my, my favorite colors. It was a joy to stitch. I never got tired of it. And I just, I just live for things that turn out like that. It's a gorgeous, it's, just, it's deep, dark purplish black. It, it's, it's just the colors are it's spectacular. Yes, picture this plus. Just did a fabulous job with that particular piece of fabric. And the cool thing about hand dyed linens like that, nobody else is going to have that that fabric all of the pieces are going to be different it's not because it never takes the same way mm. so every piece is an original wow. same thing with this just every one of those pieces are going to be are going to be different so nobody else is going to have one that looks just exactly <laughs> and so that makes truly makes your work an original well, thank you so much for this exploration, Cindy, and we hope you come back and show us some more of your work and bring more for the display case. Well, thank you so much to the library for letting me show my stitchery in the lobby and for doing all of this. This is a great outlet. I, I'm not on Facebook or anything, and I, I don't have, as I said, no, no guilds and meetings that I get to share it. So this was great to be able to just share something that I love. Oh, awesome. You're always welcome here, Cindy. Thank, Thank you, you again. <laughs>